was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. 
put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me at the door of our bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all of this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. And all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took up the Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance as far as the courtyards of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, at last two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the bottom of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard this, his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that has struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. I do not know what you were talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crowed, you will deny me three times. He went out and wept. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring him his death. They found him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, he said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury since they are a blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury corn. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. That was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one
Are you king of the Jews? You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they have made against you? But he gave no answer, not even a single charge. So the governor was greatly amazed. Now the festival of the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner of the crowd, anyone who they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Let him be crucified. Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more. Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was to give him, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourself. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them in order that Jesus be flogged. And when they had crucified him, 
passed by and were riding him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. About three o'clock, Jesus cried a loud voice, Eli, Eli, that is, my God, my God, why are you saved? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for life. And once one of them ran and got a sponge, <coughs> filled it with sour wine, and put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait! Wait. Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtains of the temple were torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks were split, the tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now, when the centurions and those with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea. Named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. When Pilate ordered it to be given to him, so Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rocks. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people, he has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went to the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Thank you. 